Hello everybody. All right, so up to this point we've built galvanic cells and we've calculated cell potential and in the most immediate previous video I showed you that cell potential calculations are really free energy calculations. Now most of the time we don't notice that they're free energy calculations but I'm going to show you an example here in this video that kind of proves to you that they're free energy calculations and that you do have to go through the delta G equals minus NF squiggly E um, analysis when you calculate cell potential changes. Okay, I'm working on a little bit of a sore throat here, so excuse me for a second. All right, so let's take a look at the sample problem I have here on our board. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different compared to what we've done in the past. Up to now, we've taken our half reactions added them together to get an entire redox reaction where we have something that's being reduced and something that's being oxidized. In this example, we're doing something a bit different. I am showing you here two half reactions. We're going to combine them, not to get a complete redox reaction, but to make a new half reaction. So you see here we've got chromium-3 to elemental chromium, chromium-2 to elemental chromium, and what I want to do is I want to go from chromium-3 to chromium-2. So if we did this the way we normally add half reactions to find cell potentials, what I would do is I would take this equation, let's call it equation 1, and I would keep it as is. Then I would take this equation, let's call it equation 2, and what we would do, of course, is we'd flip it, right? And if I flip that second reaction and then add the two together, I would get my target equation. I would have chromium-3 going to chromium-2. And of course, when you do that, what you would anticipate on doing is taking the negative 0.84 volts here and simply flipping it to positive 0.84 volts. And if you do that, you would find that you get the number I have there, 0.11 volts. Now we can use our handy-dandy potential chart to calculate, or I should say double-check our answer. So chromium-3 to chromium-2, I can find it here on our chart. And if you have the chart handy, you'll see that chromium-3 to chromium-2 is about halfway down on the right-hand side of the chart. And what do we see? We don't see 0.11 volts. What we see is negative 0.5 volts. So not only do we have the wrong value, we also have the wrong sign. And since this is thermodynamics, getting the wrong sign is a really big deal, right? My calculation here seems to suggest that chromium-3 to chromium-2 is spontaneous, but the chart here says that it's non-spontaneous by half a volt. Well, what we've done here is we haven't really done a free energy calculation. We just flipped one of the potentials and added them together. And most of the time you can get away with doing that, but in this case we can't. So let's take a look at how we would really want to do this calculation as a free energy calculation. So let me shrink this guy down and swap it out for this stuff here. Okay, keep that stuff handy because we'll probably refer to it. So here's how we really should do the calculation, again because these are free energy calculations. So my target equation, I'm call called it equation 3, I get my delta G3 by taking the delta G1 minus the delta G2. Now remember, delta G is minus NF squiggly E. So if I plug in minus NF squiggly E for each of the G1s and the G2s and the G3s, like you saw me do in the previous video, and I ultimately need to solve for squiggly E3, right? That's what we're going for, the cell potential of the target equation. What I would get is E3 equals this statement here. Now, what happens when we start to plug in the values, the specific values, is we see here that the values of N don't cancel out. If I combine half reactions to get a complete redox reaction, my values of N eventually factor out. But because I'm getting a new half reaction where the electron is still in there, the ends aren't going to cancel out. So that's what I see. I have N, which is the moles of electrons from equation one, the potential of equation one, N2, the moles of electrons from equation two, and the cell potential for equation two. 
all divided by n3, which is the moles of electrons, in this case 1, for that third equation. So you see here that my moles of electrons do not get factored out. So when I plug in this equation and do it more rigorously by doing the free energy analysis, I will ultimately get negative 2.19 plus 1.7, add that together and I ne get negative 0.49, which agrees with the value that we see on our chart. So there are two types of cell potential calculations we're doing here up to this point. We have half reactions that get combined into a complete redox reaction. It has an oxidation part and a reduction part, and there are no electrons left over in the final equation. When you have that, you simply flip the least spontaneous potential off of the chart and add them together because the moles of electrons are going to be forced to factor out. Here in the second type of equation, I've combined half reactions to get a new half reaction. So the electron, in this case one electron, the electrons don't factor out. So I actually have to do this more rigorous, more detailed, delta G equals minus NF squiggly E calculation. And we see here now we get the right answer when those electrons don't factor out. So pay attention to what kind of a cell calculation you're doing here. Half reactions to whole redox reactions or half reactions to new half reactions. Pay attention because one, you get away with not doing the free energy version. The other one, you must do the free energy version. And a little bit of a warning. This content is not shown in our textbook, okay? I don't know why. Um, they kind of sort of ignore that cell potentials are actually free energy calculations, but this sort of proves it, okay? All for now. Um, next up, we'll probably talk about uh, something called line notation, I think. All right, see you then.